This show is in partnership with ATU Sligo Innovation Centre, the hub of innovation and commercial enterprise for startups, industry and academia. The Sligo Show is produced by Pixel Productions and hosted by Brendan Tierney. If you need video for your business or live event or would like to appear on the show, send us a message today. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Sligo Show with myself, Brendan Tierney. We're joined today by another one of the amazing cast from the upcoming show at the Hawkswell. I love you. You're perfect. Now change. Thank God I got that. Warren McCook, you're very welcome to The Sligo Show. Thank you so much, Brendan. It's not always we have outsiders in here now, so you're very, very privileged and very uh, lucky. <laughs> there was some people with pitchforks outside. Yeah, there, for there me. was. Yeah, okay, that's why we have yeah, all this black stuff around so no one can see in, you know. Used to it. <laughs> so, you, uh, have you been in Sligo before, actually? Have you been a visitor? or ever? I have. I was in Sligo uh, years ago for um, a show called Tactics for Time Travel in a oh. Toilet. The show wasn't in a toilet. No, no it was no. in the Hawks. It, <laughs> it was in, I think it was, in, I actually, I don't know. What, was it here? I don't know where it was. Okay. Um, but it was in Sligo. Um, and uh, it's. I, I thought, oh, this place is absolutely beautiful. And mm-hmm. the director of that, a uh, guy called Niall Ray, lovely man, he um, uh, lives literally beside the, the theater, I think. Oh, okay. Which is crazy to me but anyway yeah um, I've been that was your first foray so you you like it you love it and now you're going to be here for a few weeks I actually have a a little anecdote about when I was here so we went to a like a I wouldn't call it a nightclub but like a bar of sorts okay and I was 20 at the time and I know a lot of places you have to be 21 yeah it depends on the night yeah yeah yeah. so and I I realized you had to be 21 to get in here but the guys were like just don't say anything just walk in if you if you're with us you'll look older and I was like okay (laughs) And I walked up and the bouncer stopped me and was like, here, ID. And I was like, shit. And I gave him ID without thinking. I was like, oh, yeah, I have ID. And then I gave it to him. And he read it, seen that I wasn't 21 yeah, yeah, and yeah. was like, yep. And you go, <laughs> and you go at so. least I said I checked your ID. Yeah. If anyone ever yeah. questions. So, you ask you. Yeah. so now anyone that's watching this 20, you can say, well, your man got in. So why aren't you letting me? So you can always use that now as evidence. Yeah. So you're in this new show. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is uh, this is one of the first times, as far as I know, the, the Hawkswell has put on its own play. I think I'm right in saying that, as far as I'm aware. So, so Kieran Griffiths, uh, yeah. the, the new, new director up there. The man, the so myth, this the is legend. Ha- yeah, so he doesn't just direct the theatre, he directs shows within it as well. Yeah. So uh, what's he like as a director? Because he seems quite nice when you meet him in person. Is he tough? Worst in the world. We can no, edit he's it out. <laughs> 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 no, he's, he's, I have nothing but adoration for the man. Mm. I, love, I love him to death. And he has given me like uh, opportunity after opportunity to like prove myself as an actor and and uh build somewhat of a what's the what would you say notoriety in in okay. the in the acting scene and yeah i so, i owe him like a great debt okay. that i will he will also back. have this recorded now yeah well i will pay it back <laughs> in small amounts of cheese is what I'm going to do. But you, 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 we were talking earlier on about you've been in two plays with a kind of a link to the Troubles and Kieran was involved in one of those, was it? Or both, both of both them. them, yeah. So, so that's, tell us a little bit about those. They sound very interesting. Okay, so the first one was called The White Handkerchief. Um, this is, these are both part of a bigger peace building trilogy. Okay. And The White Handkerchief was about uh, what happened on Bloody Sunday. And I played the lead role, uh, a character called, a character, a man called mm. William McKinney. And he basically was the lens that the story was told through. He was one of the marchers that day who uh, tragically lost their lives. And um, uh, the story it told through his lens up, up until the end of Act One and, wh- and after which it uh, is told through almost as if he's like still around in the city, but yeah. like um, Not no one alive. can see him kind of thing. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. That must um, have been a very, was it a very... Um, obviously more emotional or was it as oh extremely emotional the movie I always remember was just a real tough one but to act that person absolutely so we we actually performed it before like to even get it green lit as such we had we performed it in front of the the victims of the families of the people who died in Bloody Sunday and the the McKinney family were there and um, they have been so lovely to me. Actually, after the the performances of the White Anchor Chief, they actually presented me with like a, a plaque, um, and it's it said, um, "Thank you, thank you, Warren, for like playing our brother and and uh, in the White Anchor Chief and stuff." And it was just such a lovely gift and such a lovely um, 
act of kindness of, yeah. from them. Like it, it, going out and performing any show is tough, but obviously yeah. I imagine going out and going, okay, these people lived it raw yeah, uh, and you have to portray their brother. Like. So I, I, I don't, I'm not certain I'm going to get this right, but I believe what happened is they, when, when William, he was there in the march and sadly lost his life, but one of the brothers had seen him um, like whenever everything started like going sideways mm. and um, one of the brothers seen him and thought, oh, he's okay. And like, but they didn't know where he was, but they, they went, ran back and reported it to their mum, and they, they were saying, now where's William and where's X, Y, Z? And they said, oh, it's okay. I seen William. He's, he's okay. Mm. Um, and sadly he wasn't. Yeah. And um, he had a, a fiance um, called Elizabeth who actually in the show, my current girlfriend, Sharon, um, <laughs> played uh, my fiancé in the show. And uh, she, I said current girlfriend, as if like I'm going to get another yeah, one Yeah, I was going to say, it's a little play on words there. It's okay, we can, we can get AI to figure that out afterwards. <laughs> it's okay if you, if you <laughs> my girlfriend forever. Anyway, <laughs> she, she played my, she played my fiancé and uh, there was a, an, a, a tremendous scene. Now, there was uh, a scene written prior and I was talking to Sinead, Sinead about this. Mm. There was a scene written prior um, to the rehearsal uh, process and um, there was dialogue between the um, man playing my father and uh, Elizabeth and um, they would come together and they had this scene and stuff and they were, I, I don't know if they made a go at it, but whenever we came into the rehearsal space, Kieran, uh, the director, yep, the, yep. the um, more current show. Yeah. yeah, he had completely flipped it on its head where there was no dialogue, none. And so basically, there was actually going to be a song as well, which he took out too. And basically the uh, man playing my father just walked up the ramp. It was it was performed in thrust. So we had uh, audiences on both sides and okay. then like this. So it was like quite immersive, like mm. we had people the whole way around. And he walks up the ramp and Sharon playing Elizabeth is at the other end. And with him saying nothing, complete subtext it just this lack of wow. like I, I don't have any words yeah yeah and then the performance that Sharon gave was just so real and so guttural like she just let the, the, the squeal it was so guttural and beautiful and like I'm sitting in the audience at this point as William watching everything unfold as as I said um William was like the narrator that they used um uh, to sort of tell the story through and what Karen had done with that scene is just make it it's it's not about the words. It's not about like it's just honest. Mm. It just made it so honest, and it's it's a really beautiful piece of theatre and really beautiful piece of um, directing. But here, yeah, because when I read about that, I mean, it, I think it sounds very intriguing. You know, I yeah. don't think there's an awful lot of plays that I'm aware of now. Not to, not to say there is or isn't, but yeah. So I kind of go. I think it's good to highlight them because if they For do sure. come around again this side of the world, I think it sounds like it'll Absolutely. be a great show to. To get to it. So you've obviously not only uh, on the theatre, a uh, stage, but uh, we might have seen you in on TV, Hope Street, you might for those have who've watched it. And I apologise if you did. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I was on Hope Street, uh, BBC's Hope Street, and uh, I had a great time on set, really, like really, really lovely people. In fact, that like some of the nicest people in the world and anyone who I've ever spoken to about um, being on Hope Street and being involved has only had ever like nice words oh, to nice. say about the okay. crew and... The directors and the the cast and uh, I played a character called Jim Murdoch who was a bit of a bad man. Oh, cool. And okay, that must be more, more fun now than being the straight laced well, character. <laughs> what? Um, yeah. So he basically it's it's a, a story of this. It's a story of there's this guy that um, Jim Murdoch who is a a businessman of sorts and he has uh, this boat um, which he allows people to go out on or something. And uh, he didn't have insurance on the boat or couldn't pay the insurance on the boat, sorry. Couldn't okay. pay the insurance on the boat. And s there was some things needed fixed and uh, things go sideways with the boat. There's an explosion. Then I try to blame my secretary and <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Sounds blah. like a nice guy. Yeah, lovely man. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, so it's uh, and it, is that that's ongoing or is that role is in and out or well, no, I'm I'm you're done. Yeah, I You're've finished. I was in one episode, which ah, okay. is season, that's good fun. So, season okay. two, episode nine. If you're uh, checking it out, yeah. But uh, it's there's a third season out now, which uh, a number a good number of my friends are in as well, okay. which is good. I have to friends. watch out. Watch out for that scene, especially you blowing up a boat. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's lots of boats in Sligo Bay now. Make sure you keep away from those. Yeah, no, I'll stay away. Don't worry. 
And you're now down here to the Hawkswell in Sligo for uh, I Love You, You're Perfect, Not Change. I have to keep you in that round. So tell us a bit about the character you're playing in that. Um, so I'm playing a, a, quite a number of uh, roles. So there's there's no sort of through line with the show. It's kind of um, episodic in terms of um, you'll be people like on a first date, um, okay. married couple, uh, older couple, um, people getting ready for dates. There's a, a plethora of yeah, like yeah. every stage of romance you can think of, really. Okay, and uh, have you learned, because you're obviously not married yet, have you learned anything from the script maybe that uh, might, um, might help you in years to come? Well, do you know something? <coughs> uh, I've, I've done the show before with Kieran. Oh, okay. And uh, there's a song... Um, which I'll be performing this time called uh, Shouldn't I Be Less In Love, which is yeah. a really beautiful song. Now, the whole show is pretty much comedy start to finish, but this this song, is it's not comedy. It's just stripped back. It's raw. It's it's honest. And it's Shouldn't I Be Less In Love With You. Like, after everything we've been through, like, should, like, should, should I not have cheated on you at some point? Should I not have, like, just got absolutely, like, like lost the plot at you? Should I not, like, be bored of you? Yeah. Like, should, shouldn't I be less in love with you? But no. And all no. the more reason to back up while you're together. Yeah, like, yeah. But, okay. but it's 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 a really, really beautiful song and hopefully I do it justice. Oh, okay, okay. So we'll be hearing you, obviously, plenty mm. of singing for yourself then yeah, all the way through. Yeah. Uh, no, because I, I seen, uh, we talked to Sinead in a previous episode here about the show and I did see a little showcase of it. It does mm. look like a real comedy romp and it again is. I think a lot of people can relate to whatever age they are oh, yeah, I'm sure. at that relationship or I was with someone like that or I know someone like that so oh, there's a lot to relate to it's it's I, I think that's one thing that like um, it's no matter what stage of romance you're at there's definitely something to relate yeah. to there and there's plenty of local Sligo faces obviously we had Sinead Conway yeah. Luke Devaney Caitlin Ressler is mm -hmm. there is there a big cast in or is it just the four of us I was going to say it is just the four yeah, okay. of us but you all have to play different roles so you're not the yeah. same character at different stages of life it's no. just showing different kinds of uh, crazy stages of yeah yeah just be like um, basically if after you watch one scene forget about those guys and Straight oh, into the next okay, one. Okay, okay. So. so that you, you might get mixed up. Which one am I now? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's no. It's 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 pretty. It's pretty clear that it's you're playing. They're playing yeah. someone else. So okay. it's it's um, unless they're like, I don't know. There's there's some t scenes that like maybe start with a song and then go into a bit of dialogue or vice versa. Mm. And like, but you you'll be able to follow along. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. No, no, no. It sounds it sounds definitely as a showcase. Your mind. I trust to go your mind. By. Don't worry. Here we go, Drew. <laughs> so it's April the third to the sixth. April third to sixth. And Hawksville.com for your tickets is the yes, only indeed. place you need to go. Yeah. Well, Warren, uh, enjoyed your stay in Sligo. Don't Thank blow up much. any boats. And you should be okay getting into nightclubs, I think, at this stage. Anyway. So you <laughs> might be all right. We'll get, come in with us and yeah. be all right. No, no, no I, I, I need to, I need to keep yeah, so the beard, beard. Otherwise, <laughs> I'll, never, I'll never get in. Warren, enjoy your stay. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you so much, Brendan. And that was Warren McCook from the new Hawksville show coming up April 3rd to 6th. I love you. You're perfect. Now change. A brilliant, brilliant comedy show. It looks like a great evening's out. So go and get your tickets. Thanks to Brian behind the scenes here for doing all the real hard work. We'll see you all again next time. The Sligo Show is produced by Pixel Productions and hosted by Brendan Tierney. If you need video for your business or live event or would like to appear on the show, send us a message today. This show is in partnership with ATU Sligo Innovation Centre, the hub of innovation and commercial enterprise for startups, industry and academia. So if you liked what you've just seen, don't forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel here. We've loads of great interviews from a load of really interesting people over the series. And if you're on social media, which I'm sure loads of you are, we are on Instagram and Facebook. So give us a follow there.